Thanksgiving Day 2003, and as sure as there's turkey on the menu on this treasured American holiday, there's NFL football on the field. With the exception of two games played in St. Louis in the mid-70s, the Dallas Cowboys and their great fans have been a part of the Thanksgiving Day football tradition for 37 years. And again today, Texas Stadium is filled in celebration. But it's much more than just a holiday tussle. It's a crucial interconference matchup as the Cowboys host the Miami Dolphins. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, to all of you from all of us here at CBS Sports. Greg Gumbel, along with Phil Simms. Well, these Dallas Cowboys have been a remarkable story this NFL season. How remarkable? Take a look at the NFC standings as the leaders position themselves for the postseason. At 8-3, Dallas is tied with the Eagles, the Panthers, and the Rams for the best record in the conference, and there are good reasons why. Phil, your Chevrolet keys to the game for the Dallas Cowboys. Well, Greg, for the Dallas Cowboys, it's all about their defense. It's suffocating. It is the biggest reason why they are 8-3. They can win games single-handedly. They can blitz. They pressure the quarterback. They got guys down the field who can cover wide receivers. Look at the rankings. When you're first in the league in so many categories, that tells you a lot about their football team. That's why they're good, and that's why they have a chance to win today and go a long way. Now, how important is this game to the Miami Dolphins? A look at the AFC standings will tell you that. With a 7-4 and four record, the Dolphins hold down the second and final wild-card playoff spot for the moment, and you have to wonder if Miami's season is on the line here today. Your key for the Dolphins. Well, the key for the Miami Dolphins is find ways to generate points. Can you do that? Can your offense get it done? But if not, you really need your defense to step up and play extremely well. All the Dolphin players talked about it. Look what their defense has done so far this year. Can they create field position for their offense, give them a short field to give them a chance to score some easy points? This game means an awful lot to both teams. The 8-3 Cowboys, the 7-4 Dolphins. Throwback jerseys are the order of this day. Happy Thanksgiving. We're coming back to Texas Stadium for the kickoff right after this. A full house at Texas Stadium on Thanksgiving Day. Let's go down to the sideline and Armin Kate and Armin. Thank you, Greg. Well, coming off essentially a very short week, just three days, Dave Wanstead has been really pushing the motivational button this week, hammering away at all the hype surrounding the reemergence of Bill Parcells and the Dallas Cowboys as America's team. Wanstead telling his team, hey guys, we win this game. We are eight and four just like they are, and we are in the same Super Bowl hunt. Greg, I can tell you this, despite the short week, emotionally, both teams are ready to play on this national stage. No question about that. Armin on the other side of the field in his 16th year as a head coach, doing wonders here in Dallas. His first season here is Bill Parcells. The Miami Dolphins have won the toss. They have elected to receive. Deep are Travis Miner, number 28, and Rob Conrad, number 44. And set to kick it away is Toby Gowen. with that we're underway in Dallas this is minor from the 12 30 and hit hard and down at about the 33 yard line Jay Fiedler came on to rally the Miami Dolphins last week last Sunday night in Washington he gets the start at quarterback today the line Bill Parcells once had his eye on Wade Smith. He's Miami's rookie left tackle. And the backs and the receivers, Ricky Williams, in search of the 91 yards he needs for a third straight 1,000-yard rushing season. Fiedler and the Dolphins from the 33. And Fiedler going to go down the sideline. Chambers had to wait for it. And it's incomplete, but a penalty marker is thrown. Mario Edwards was covering. The Miami Dolphins told us last night. Pass interference. 27 on the defense. Automatic first down. They told us last night we are going to go deep and we're going to go deep early. They know they're going to get man coverage on the outside. Chris Chambers. Greg, we had a chance to talk to him also last night. This guy was so excited because he knows he's going to have a chance to make a lot of big plays down the field today. On first down, Ricky Williams. 
looking for running room and gets a couple to about the 32 of the Cowboys. A look at the NFL's top-rated defense. Greg Ellis, the sack leader on the front line. He has four. Middle linebacker Dat Wynn surprising a lot of people, including Bill Parcells, who said he didn't know Wynn was as good as he is when he arrived. The secondary includes a terrific rookie out of Kansas State, Dallas's first-round draft choice, Terrence Newman. Here's Mike Zimmer, Dallas's defensive coordinator. What a job he's done this season. Second and five. Williams again. Two to 25 and a first down. You hear those cheers every once in a while from the crowd when Ricky Williams runs the football. Remember, he played at the University of Texas not far from here. Got a big ovation when he was announced. So. We thought maybe he was in a cowboy uniform when he came out onto the field. But it's interesting. Ricky Williams watching film the Dallas Cowboys defense. Dave Wanstead walks into the room and Ricky Williams says they were watching last week's game. He goes, look, why did Carolina quit running it? They were running for three yards almost every play. So Dave Wanstead, so excited to hear that, went and ran and told his coaches, we're back. Williams. Cut down at the 24. And he says we're back because Ricky Williams is not having the year, of course, not like he had last year. And it has been a little slow. And everybody thinks he's been looking for those big runs, which he had a lot of them last year. So when Dave Wanstead heard that he was looking at those three-yard runs, and you know if you do those well, sooner or later, the big run just happens. Williams, three carries for 13 yards so far today. Second and nine. A pair of tight ends in the lineup for Miami. Fever, play fake. Looking, throws, that is complete inside the 15-yard line to Randy McMichael, the tight end, number 81. Play action pass, a double tight end, Jay Fiedler. The Miami Dolphins want to do a lot of different things today. Boy, under pressure, just gets it off. Greg Ellis hits him. The ball is underthrown. It really kind of helps because McMichael was covered. But they're going to move Jay Fiedler around, try to throw, throw the football down the field to make this Dallas defense back up just a little. First down from the 12. Williams. The middle inside the five twisting to about the three and a half yard line Roy Williams Dexter Coakley with the stop boy that's it I haven't seen Ricky Williams just running up in there as hard as he did last year until Sunday night when they were playing the Washington Redskins he had a lot of good short runs and then what do you know those good short runs late in the game, all of a sudden they turn into long touchdowns. Dave Wonsett said it last night. Ricky has played his best this season the past two weeks. Coming around the left side and run out of bounds. Close to a first down. Let's see where the ball is spotted. Darren Woodson ran him out of bounds. Now you talk about this Cowboy defense. One thing Bill Parcell said. He goes, this Ricky Williams. We haven't faced a guy like this. He can go inside, and if he, he doesn't like it, he has the speed to break outside and outrun your defense to the sideline and still pick up yards. Line of scrimmage is the one-yard line. It's first and goal for the Miami Dolphins. Williams and Conrad in the backfield. Along with the double tight end setup. Ricky Williams doesn't get there. The slap at the football grabbed by the Cowboys. Was there a whistle? Williams made the dive, didn't get to the end zone, kind of had the ball up in the air, and Cowboys started hacking away at it. The officials are now going to try to determine if he was stopped. I can, well, I'm not going to say this. I think they're the ruling on the field that the runner's forward progress was stopped. Second down. That's what you could see the officials. One of them said his forward progress was stopped. He goes for the jump. 
and then the ball is slapped out of his hands by Dat Wynn, the middle linebacker. Second and goal. Straight ahead. No signal yet. And now a touchdown. Jay Fiedler, his 10th career rushing touchdown. And that makes him number one among Miami quarterbacks in that department all time. Good job just getting up there and going. Quick snap count by Jay Fiedler. The Cowboy defense not dug in and not ready for the quarterback sneak. Olindo Mare for the extra point. It's up and it is good. 10-24 to play in the first quarter. You have to figure the Miami Dolphins did exactly what they had to do here today. They came out. They got on the board first. They lead 7-0. Texas Stadium, the Miami Dolphins have taken the opening kickoff. 67 yards on eight plays. And Jay Fiedler's one-yard sneak has the Dolphins up 7-0. Derek Ross, number 21, Avion Quezon, 23, are deep. Low line drive kick bouncing and picked up at the 10-yard line by Ross. And hit as he hit, reaches the 25-yard line and goes down. Leading the charge was Tommy Hendricks, number 51. 21-yard return. We'll take a break. Dallas goes on offense behind Quincy Carter after this. Yes, is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Friendly nonstop service all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. Volkswagen, on the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. And by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Well, all kinds of things have happened. There's referee Peter Morelli after we left you and went to break it was ruled that there was a fumble caused by tommy Hendricks. there the ball was loose recovered by the miami dolphins and it's miami ball at the dallas 30 yard line big turnaround couple things dave wanstab was hoping for turnovers to give his offense a short field he's got one early williams left side inside the 30 to the 27 yard line or so and now pick up and it's turned over to the cowboys this is terrence newman going downfield but the big key is there are no officials running with him this ball is down back at the line near the line of scrimmage Two turnovers in six seconds of play, and the Cowboys are back in business. Ricky Williams, all teams that play the Miami Dolphins say they want to get on to Ricky Williams, hit him, and try to grab the football. That time, it was just a hit by Ebenezer Ecubon. It looks like it just came underneath, knocked the football out, and Terrence Newman recovers. It's not the kind of football that's going to make a head coach happy. But it's exciting. <laughs> now you look at this Dallas Cowboy offense. We talked to Bill Parcells about his offense and what they're going to do today. And he goes, now, I don't know if you've noticed, but we're not exactly an offensive juggernaut out here. So they're looking to run the football, be decent doing that, but for big pass plays. That's what they hope gives them the score. Troy Hambrick, and Hambrick is hit behind the line of scrimmage by Zach Thomas. A look at the Dallas offense. The line starts rookie Torin Tucker at right tackle today. It is a line that also boasts seven-time pro bowler Larry Allen. There is Tucker, Adams, Allen, Lear, and Gerard. The backs and the receivers, Terry Glenn, the Cowboys leader in catches and yardage. He has five touchdowns on the year. Loss of one on that play at second and 11. Carter under pressure he eludes one can't elude the rest and down he goes at about the 22 yard line Wale Ogunlie making the play Miami's defense Carter will want to keep an eye on him he now has 11 sacks on the season Jason Taylor on the other side linebacker Zach Thomas as usual the leading tackler for Miami and the secondary Patrick Sertan has matched his single season high of six interceptions comes in looking for more 
Loss of four makes it now third and 15 for Carter and the Cowboys. Wally Ogunglier, Jason Taylor, it's as good as two defensive ends as there are in the league when it comes to rushing the passer. Richie Anderson, the lone back. He gets the handoff, 25. Short of the 30-yard line. Patrick Sertan up for the stop from his cornerback position after a six-yard gain. And onto the field comes the Dallas punting unit. Well, we heard Armin Katayan before the game talking about Dave Wanstead getting all the emotional poise he could to get his team fired up. He used it. He says, hey, this is a heck of a deal. Thanksgiving Day on TV for my football team. And, Greg, we saw it with Dave Wanstead and the players. They were as as and ready to play as we've ever been uh, seen since we've been around the Miami Dolphins. Goins kick sailing to the left and out of bounds and bounces back. Bill Parcells told us the other day, we asked him about special teams. He said, I'm mad at my punter. Well, this isn't going to help matters any. 26 yard kick out of Toby Goins. Well, we mentioned that statistic, Jay Fiedler. You'd have thought Dan Marino would have been in that group, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. He threw him from a foot out instead of doing quarterback sneaks. Ricky Williams dodges a tackler in the backfield, but not the next two. He loses yardage on the play. Two to be exact. It'll be second and 12. Dave Wanstead told us the intent was not to change quarterbacks last week, but he found himself down late in the second half, felt he had no choice, and Fiedler, seeing his first action since week seven, rallied the Dolphins to a win over the Washington Redskins. That's why he needed a spark. Jay Fiedler even told us, man, I came in loose. Had nothing to lose. We were down 13 points. I think he learned a little something there. Fiedler throws. That's complete to Chambers across the 50 and into Dallas territory to about the 47-yard line. Fiedler was 5 out of 10 for 59 yards against Washington. Not great statistics, but as you mentioned, it was the emotional, the emotional lift that he gave. And Chris Chambers told us you could feel a spark as soon as he walked into the huddle. Yeah, that's right. Well, he handles himself a little differently than Brian Greasy did. You look at the winning percentage of starting quarterbacks. Jay Fiedler high up on that list. Looking at a third and two. He'll throw for it. Going to go deep. And this one is going to be overthrown incomplete. Pass intended for Chambers on the far side with Terrence Newman covering him and onto the field. Comes the punting unit. Well, a couple good things for the Miami Dolphins offense, even on that series. They protected Jay Fiedler well twice when he went to throw. Third down and short. They go deep. They want to keep doing that. The blitz by the Cowboys. The Dolphins pick it up. So if you pick up blitzes, that will stop a team from, from coming after you. Turk, high toward the corner, and bounces into the end zone. Through the end zone, touchback. We're a little confused here. We've gone about two minutes without a fumble. CBS is sponsored by T-Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. And by Guinness Draft Stout. Enjoyed responsibly the world over. You have a sports fan on your shopping list? Check out CBS Sports Line's official store for sporting goods, ranging from NFL fan gear to equipment for all of your favorite sports. Just click on shop at cbsportsline.com. First down, Dallas, 20 yard line. Carter throwing the sideline, and that's complete and out of bounds to so number 88, Antonio Bryant. That'll be a pickup of seven. It'll be second and three. Now, some things I've noticed already. The Dallas Cowboys offensive line, Torin Tucker, number 77. He's a rookie in there starting. He had Wally Ogunglea on him. Now, you know, now Jason Taylor came over and took a chance. So, you know, everybody wants a shot at the rookie, Greg. That's what I'm trying to say there. Must be a wonderful life your first time around the park. Oh, it is. Just take your beatings, be quiet, and... Get some experience and try to come back and pay him back. Not much there on the left side for Troy Hambrick. Well, I told you what Dave Wine said. He says, last week I told my defense 
let's don't give up the big pass safeties no matter what stay deep and they played soft and it looked it when you saw their game against the Washington Redskins so he says hey that's just not going to happen let's be aggressive make well, a couple things he says I want to get to the fourth quarter and I want it to be Quincy Carter versus Jay Fiedler because I like our chances if we get it down to that Carter looking at third and three Give it to Anderson, and Anderson comes up short of the yardage he needs for a first down. Not fooled at all that time. Tim Bowens, Larry Chester inside the two defensive tackles just give no ground. Zach Thomas comes flying in there, Junior Seau. Just too, too much confusion for the Cowboys' offensive line. So here's Gowen again trying to improve on his last kick. That won't take much. It only went 26 yards. Rodgers is deep. Rodgers lost the football, picked up by a teammate, and is down at about the 34-yard line. Terrell Buckley was there to cover for Charlie Rodgers. Is there such a thing as Thanksgiving Day jitters? We've seen enough of them. But the turkey was the only one jittery today. In honor of Thanksgiving, Phil Sims recognizes a few players and coaches who are definitely worthy of our thanks. Read all about it only at NFL.com or at NFL on AOL. From the 34-yard line, Fiedler with just Ricky Williams behind him. Makes the pitch to Ricky. Fiedler throws. McMichael to the 40. 45 and enough for a first down as he crosses the 45-yard line. Jay Fiedler definitely on the move today from his quarterback position. Well, you, Greg, we said that. That's what the coaches told us, that they want to move him around, and you have to. The Dallas Cowboys love to pressure the quarterback or the opposing offense up the middle. And so when you move the quarterback around, it makes it, of course, tougher to sack him. And when they're, they're bringing in running formations and running play action passes off of them that's why the tight end was wide open fakes the pitch last time fakes to ricky up the middle fiedler running out of time throws it over the middle complete to williams and williams to midfield this time fiedler stock still in the middle of the pocket well when you play the dallas cowboys you're the opposing quarterback you just got to know that there's going to be pressure on you. You're going to take a few hits, and that's just going to be part of the game today. Kenyon Coleman delivers the hit to Jay Fiedler. Tested that knee out. He said it's still a little sore, but he's moving around very well early in the game. Second and six. Fakes the screen one way, throws to the other. Ricky Williams with blockers in front of him. First down and more inside the 40 to the Cowboy 37-yard line. Excellent deception by this offense, the Miami Dolphins. They fake the screen to the left. Play action. Look left, turn right. And when you do that against a fast defense, that's a lot for them to process. So they're looking for the pass to the left, move just a little. That's why Ricky Williams can pick up some extra yards. Miami now with seven first downs to none for the Cowboys. Williams with a breather on the sideline. Travis Minor into the backfield. the handoff inside the 35 to about the 31 close to the 30 yard line and this Dolphins offense showing a great deal of versatility here early on yeah they're mixing it up well Greg and you know that we talked to Jay Fiedler last night you could tell he's excited to be back in there and I had to ask him the question what did you learn standing over there in the sideline for those weeks while your knee was injured and he says well I learned a lot I watched Brian Greasy play I, I recognize that he does a good job of getting rid of the football real quick. It's quick release. So he goes, I changed mine. I went back to some fundamentals. And he says, some scouts and people around the organization said they even noticed it last week. Minor again. And Minor inside the 30 to the 29. However, he did say when we asked him, well, how was it coming off the bench? It was strange. Yeah, it's strange. Well, that's right. It's not something he's done much. Well, he hasn't done it all since he's been with the Miami Dolphins. But it is interesting. Quarterbacks. Once they lose their job or hurt and they sit on the sideline, 
you should learn. You always learn from the good or the bad from the other quarterback is in there. So it really taught Jay Fiedler, go back to the fundamentals, hold the football, hold in the right space, and just get rid of it when there's nothing there. Cowboys to their feet on third down, and there's a first down run by Travis Miner up the middle, just inside the 25 to the 24. They needed two, they got five. First down, Miami. Well, what Dave Wanstead told us about Ricky Williams sitting in that film room looks like it's very true so far in this game. The Dallas Cowboys running the football well with power, and the running backs, most importantly, are very decisive about what they're doing. Williams back into the game. We are in the final minute of the first quarter. Fake to Williams. Fiedler throws. That's complete inside the 20 yard line to James McKnight. North Turner is just emptying the bucket here in the first quarter on offense. Well, the Cowboys got to learn when they get in this tight formation and you think run, they're doing it for a reason. They want you to think run and they're doing a good job of play action fakes. Jay Fiedler moving around. There's North Turner up top. And the wide receivers. Answering the challenge because it is a challenge when you play this Dallas defense. From the 17 yard line. Ricky Williams. Nowhere to go. Maybe a yard or so. And that is the final play of the first quarter. We've played 15 minutes here in Dallas. The Dolphins with a 7 0 lead on the Dallas Cowboys. Happy Thanksgiving from Texas Stadium, everyone. The old guy in red with his own Dallas Christmas wish. Start of the second quarter. We change ends of the field and Miami will see if it can continue to produce on offense. We we're talking about it during the break. They've been very impressive today. Well, the body language we saw last night from the Miami Dolphins, I think we drove away from the hotel going, hey, they're pretty fired up about this. They're not down about what they've done. They've won two good games the last two weeks. They're their confidence is back up and they played very well to start this game. This is a third and two. Williams tries the right side and doesn't get there. Comes to a stop at the 15-yard line. It'll be fourth and one, and Olindo Mare and the field goal unit come onto the field. Dave Wanstead sees a chance to put points on the board, and he's not going to play with that. Yeah, also, but it's some really good opportunities to really put points on the board for this Dolphins offense. The fumble one time when they recovered a fumble. Here you got third and short. You don't convert. You saw there, Mari had a tough day a few years ago here in Dallas. This one is on its way, and from 33 yards out, it is good. 14 24 to play. First half. Wanstead and the Dolphins extend their lead. 10 0. Belindo Mari capped off that 51 yard drive with the field goal from 33 yards out. And we'll now kick it away in Miami with a 10-0 lead. Derek Ross, the deep man for the Dallas Cowboys. On one hop, it's Ross. With blocking, 20, 25. Almost to the 35-yard line. A reminder tonight on CBS, thousands of crimes go unsolved, but one detective brings these cold cases back to life. Don't miss a special Thursday episode of TV's number one new drama, Cold Case, tonight at 8, 7 central on CBS. There's Bill Parcells talking to him about how, how it is to bring a team back on such short notice from a Sunday game. And he says, well, coming off a win is better because the energy is there. The energy was there, and they practiced all three days, putting quite a bit of time and didn't miss many repetitions like they would get during a normal week. On first down, the give is to Richie Anderson, and that one is going nowhere. Let's go down to Armin. Greg, what's interesting, last week following their crucial win over Carolina, the Cowboys players told us they saw a side of Bill Parcells they'd never seen before in his very emotional, almost teary-eyed speech in the locker room when he told the players how proud he was of them. Quincy Carter telling us, you know, he's so stone-faced, he's just so difficult to get to, to see that side of Bill Parcells, that kind of humanity 
only served to strengthen the bond that Parcells is obviously building here between himself and his players, Greg. So Quincy has to say in a couple of years. Well, that soft side's going to change real quick, Armin. It's harder to throw. That one's complete and out to close to the 40-yard line to Troy Hambrick coming out of the backfield. You know, too, I'm watching this game, and I'm, I'm watching Zach Thomas. He's off to a really good start making some plays, and he was talking about this Cowboy offense to us last night. He just goes, boy, I can't get the feel of it because no matter what you do, they're a team that always counters. So if you think you know what's coming on a running play, well, they'll give you that same look, and all of a sudden it's a it's a play-action pass, so it fools you. But he goes, what do you got to say at the end? Go, but I'll get it. Don't you worry. I'll get in rhythm with their offense during the game. Third and five. Out of the shotgun. Carter with time and throws over the middle, and that's close to the 50-yard line. It's enough for a first down caught by Joey Galloway. Great job, that offensive line for the Cowboys, giving Carter time to complete that pass. Dallas records its first first down of the day. Well, Bill Parcells, a couple things. Dallas does protect the passer very well. And last week, Quincy Carter, Coach, was tell Coach Parcells was telling us the Carolina Panthers played back. They tried to cover the wide receivers, and Quincy Carter did a good job of picking open uh, the open wide receiver, and he did it on that last play, too. Carter to throw. Again, with time, throws. Man is open, and that's complete. Terry Glenn inside the 20 and out of bounds. Yeah! 32-yard pickup. When you got a team that's going to play a zone defense, in other words, they're looking at the quarterback a lot, what you do is try to send one receiver deep, and then you send another one underneath. That's Terry Glenn. That's why he's wide open. Watch him. He goes all the way across the field, and it makes it very tough for a linebacker like Junior Seau to see him, pick him up and cover him. From the 18-yard line. Carter, screen, and dropped. Richie Anderson had it, dropped it. It'll be second and ten. That could have been a big play by Richie Anderson. The Dolphins were running away. They had blockers in front. Could have got inside the 10-yard line. The defense changed. Look at Moreland Greenwood, number 52, running away from the offense. Nobody sees it. Blockers in front, and he drops the pass. And looks like we have a, a Dolphin injured on the field. That's Tim Bowens, number 95, the two-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle. And has been doing a heck of a job stuffing the run so far here this afternoon. He definitely has. So Bowens is going to limp off the field. We'll take a timeout, 11.34 to play in the half. In the red zone, look at Dallas's numbers. The last 14 drives have produced nine touchdowns. Hambrick, the lone back behind Carter. Carter will throw it. And that's complete inside the 10-yard line, and that's close to a first down to Jason Witten, the rookie out of Tennessee. The tight ends have become much more of a focal point on the Dallas Cowboys offense here of late. Jason Witten, he is the receiving tight end once again good protection Miami have four good defensive linemen they don't blitz a lot because they feel like they don't have to they can get to the quarterback but this is a big strong offensive line the Dallas Cowboys have we get a measurement and it's first and goal for the Cowboys now Dave wants that told us last night we want to stop the run first and foremost against Dallas he's done that Dallas has carried the ball five times on the ground for a total of eight yards Problem is they aren't able to put the clamps on Quincy Carter and his receivers. Well, that's Greg. It's we said it. We'll stop the run, see if they can beat us with the pass, and that's he'll change his attitude if they keep throwing the football well. Miami's red zone defense is the best in the National Football League, and about to be tested here. First and goal. Galloway in motion. 
Carter throws to Galloway. Dropped at the 10-yard line. It'll be second and 10. Second and goal, rather. Second and goal at the end. Well, I think it's safe to say he wasn't going anywhere. What do you think? There's only about six defenders for the Dolphins over there as he dropped the pass. But down in here, once you get inside the 10-yard line, Greg, we hear it all the time from quarterbacks. It's the worst. First and goal from the nine-yard line because it's just tough. The defense has less field to deal with, to cover, and how you get it in the end zone, either a really good running attack, you got to do something that's deceptive. Carter, with time, running out of time, scrambling, goes down, and penalty marker is down. Wale Ogunlier is the man who got to Carter, and let's check the flag. Second time today, Ogunlier has gotten to the quarterback. Holding, no 29 defense, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's a big penalty against Sam Madison. Sam Madison, number 29, going to be to the right of your screen. Joey Galloway, he had a hold of him even before they came into the screen. And good shot, grabbing the jersey. That's an easy call. He was holding him before he came into the picture, and he was holding him as they left. That's right. Hambrick into the lineup. First and goal inside the five. Harder to throw it again. On the move. And throws it away out of the end zone. What is it you're always preaching to me about now, about the back of the end zone? That is usually not a uh, place on the field that the defense covers well, but the Miami Dolphin defense did at that time. Well, what do you mean I'm preaching to you? You hear it from all the coaches. Where do you think I get this information? All I do is steal information. And if I don't like it, I change it. So. Second and goal. I like the way you always ask coaches questions that I keep preaching to you, and you hate it when they verify the answer. Give us to Richie Anderson. Anderson, touchdown. That's Richie Anderson's first rushing touchdown of the season. Well, when you talk about deception, this is deception by the Dallas Cowboys. Strictly a passing formation. Only Richie Anderson, the pass receiving back in the backfield. It catches him off guard just enough for him to make a good run and get the touchdown. Billy Cundiff for the extra point. And it's good. Not only Richie Anderson's first rushing touchdown of the season, his first rushing touchdown since December of 1996. The Cowboys jump right back into it. It's 10-7 Miami. Howdy, my name is Major Mike Greer from Lubbock, Texas. I'm here in Baghdad with U.S. Army 5th Corps as an ops officer, and I want to say hello to my family and friends back in Texas. Go Cowboys! And our best wishes for a happy Thanksgiving to the men and women overseas who cannot be home on Thanksgiving. Richie Anderson's four-yard touchdown run. Travis Miner deep for the kick. Miner from the 11. Just across the 25 and out to about the 28-yard line. Randall Williams made the stop. And how about Ricky Williams and the help he's been getting up front today? Well, the offensive line doing a terrific job. Look at that hole. Robert Conrad, 44. Good pass receiving fullback, but getting some very good blocks so far today. Good job by the Todd Perry on the block. Robert Conrad again, and Ricky Williams, very productive so far. Here's Rob Conrad. In his fifth season out of Syracuse. Fiedler and the Dolphins trying to recapture some momentum here. They give us to Williams. And Williams to about the 29-yard line, just shy of the 30. Eric Obagu, one of Bill Parcell's reclamation projects. Yeah, he really is, Greg, and he had him with the New York Jets. But first, let's just look at this. As you look at the Dallas Cowboy defense, when you see just one safety real deep, that tells you, we just showed you a package on Ricky Williams. 
Well, they're concerned about it, so they put an extra person up near the line of scrimmage to stop the run. Second and eight. Fiedler flips to Williams. Williams eludes win out across the 35 to the 36 yard line. And once again, Eric Abagu with the stop. That win, number 55, the middle linebacker. Bill Parcell says, Greg, you said it when you're introducing the lineups. Dad Wynn and Dexter Coakley, two smaller linebackers in the league. They're playing very well, better than he thought, but he says they are exceptional pass coverage linebackers, and he can handle Ricky Williams one-on-one. -on -one. Cowboys leading tackler, Williams in a double tight end setup now on third and two. Fake to Williams. Fiedler has his man open. That's Conrad. Conrad inside the Cowboy 40-yard line and a first down. There is no doubt that this Miami Dolphins offense is much more aggressive today in their execution and the play calling by North Turner than they've been in a while. And it's catching the Cowboys off guard. That's all it is. They're thinking run. Jay Fiedler comes with a pass. Nobody covers Robert Conrad down the field. Is there a clearer perception than what we're seeing now, the difference between Jay Fiedler quarterbacking the Miami Dolphins and Brian Greasy? Fiedler fakes to Williams. Going to go deep. Has a man open. It is caught in the end zone for a touchdown. Chris Chambers. What a route by Chris Chambers. It's just him and Mario Edwards down the field. It's going to go up, does a good job, stays inside. Nice fake to the outside, and Mario Edwards knows he's in trouble. And Jay Fiedler, that is a perfect throw by him. That is not unlike the very first pass of the game that Fiedler threw, but he underthrew it to Chris Chambers. Chambers was open for a touchdown in the first play of the game against Edwards. You're right, Greg. Slightly underthrown, but he got the pass interference. Extra point is good. Chambers ties his career high with his seventh touchdown catch of the season. The Dolphins strike back, regain that momentum. We'll be back. CBS is sponsored by Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. And by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. A reminder, the next L halftime report upcoming. Jim, Dan, Dion, and Boomer have first half analysis, a recap of Green Bay, Detroit, and a performance by Toby Keith. It's all coming up on the next L halftime report. Mari kicks. Get some foot into this one. Look at this one. Let's say. All the way out of the end zone. The touchback. It'll start at the 20-yard line, and here's the touchdown. Well, first, just look, because they've been running the football, look how many defenders are up near the line of scrimmage. Here's Chris Chambers. There's Mario Edwards. Just watch the move to the outside. There's nobody to help him, and it is an excellent move by Chris Chambers. And, Greg, we talked to him last night. I said, what do you think of these Dallas Cowboy corners? I can't even tell you what he said because it was nothing flattering. He says... They can't cover me. They're not that good. They're overrated. They're stiff. He went on and on. I went, wow, okay. Feeling confident about what he's going to do today. And so far, he has shown that he, he is definitely too much man for him. Carter throws, and that's the tight end, Jason Witten. And Witten is buried at the 20-yard line. What was really interesting in comparing the two cornerbacks, he said, one, Newman has speed but hasn't learned to use his hands. And we have a Dolphin down. And the other one, Edwards, grabs a lot and holds a lot. That's Junior Seau. That's what Junior Seau, well, he went down for like the body block tie on. Just, hey, 260 pounds of man falling on you will knock the breath out of you. So as they look after Junior Seau, we'll take a timeout. It was a night of great holiday entertainment. 20 years ago, he became a hero, then disappeared. Now, a mysterious stranger just might make his family's wish of finding him come true. Peter Falk, 
and Valerie Bertinelli star in a world premiere holiday movie, Finding John Christmas, Sunday at 9, 8 central on CBS. Junior Seau leaving the field. And we'll get a report on him as soon as we can. Meanwhile, Carter back to throw again. Sideline, and that one is complete. And out of bounds across the 25-yard line is Richie Anderson. Let's go down to Armin. Greg, it's a left shoulder injury for Junior Seau. He is definitely not happy. He just punched a cooler about 10 feet in the air. He's going in the locker room to get some work on it. I'll update you as soon as I can. All right, Armin, thank you. You know, I thought it was interesting, Greg, during the commercial, you looked and turned to me and said, hey, the Dolphins are loose today. And, and I said, yeah, that, uh, they are. I noticed it at the end of the game when Jay Fiedler came in last week that they just let it go. And if I have one complaint about their team, they just don't let it go enough. And the coaches on both sides are allowing them to play today. And they've really, well, they've answered the call. They're letting them go. And they're start. doing well Number with 20, it. Offense. We have a false start call down. against the Cowboys, Richie Anderson. Now, you know, I know the Dolphins have had problems this year with their offensive line, and they can't protect as well as they would like to. But still, even with all that, that it's even more important to do certain things, to do more play action passes, to move the quarterback around and keep the defense off guard. And that is by far the reason why they're having success today so far. Third and nine. We good? Just a two-man rush on Carter, who has all kinds of time, and now he's going to take off. 30, 40, and a first down. Well, I know what Dave Weinstead is thinking. He even talked about this defense. They really only got like two guys rushing. So Quincy Carter does the best thing. Just wait. And when you only have a couple guys rushing, sooner or later they'll get out of their lanes and look at the opening that he has to run in. And you heard it, Greg. He talked about it last night. He hated himself for calling those defenses. But here they come and do it again today. And they give up a big third down. 19 yard run is a career long for Carter, and now the handoff. And the ground game has really done nothing well, for the Dallas Cowboys so far today. Yeah, it's done nothing. And um, they're just running it just so Quincy Carter can catch his breath to throw it next down. That's, that's really what they're doing. Look what they'd like to do. Bill Parcell says, I'd like to take the football and run it outside and make these corners tackle the football. That's what I did when I was with the New York Jets. But we can't even try that because we can't do it with this offense right now. So it's running up in there. Try to keep them honest, but you're going to win the game by throwing it. Carter. Throws, and that's intercepted. A marker flies. Intercepted by Patrick Sertan. And let's see if the penalty is against him. Interference. 23 in the defense. Automatic first down. So instead of going the other way, the Cowboys get a first down out of it. Well, it's Sertan, Patrick Sertan against Terry Glenn. Sertan is on the outside. Oh, it's the grab in the jersey of again. Again. But boy, I tell you what. Officials can miss that every once in a while. And when you play the Miami Dolphins, you know it, Greg. Patrick Sertan and Sam Madison. They are not afraid to take a chance, and they'll make you nervous when you throw it near the sideline. That penalty good for 11 yards. The Cowboys now at the Miami 47. And Terrell Buckle, the third defensive back. Carter, going to go deep. Far sideline, it is incomplete. Intended for Randall Williams. It'll be second and ten. Of course, and there's just the slightest contact down the field. It's always perceived to be pass interference. Brock Marion against Randall Williams. He's in good position, but never really gets turned around to look for the football. If Quincy Carter would have kept it in bounds, Randall Williams would have had a chance to catch it. That's tough for a safety to turn and find the ball against a wide receiver that deep down the field. Carter on the move this time and throws, and it is tipped and incomplete. 
Sertan got a hand on it. And what did he do? He came off the guy he was covering, saw the quarterback, just leave your guy, go, go chase the football. He's underneath. Quincy Carter doesn't even think that Sertan is part of the play, but Sam Madison and Sertan both do it. They do a tremendous job of that. And we hear it from every quarterback that plays against the Dolphins. They're going to take advantage of it. Yeah, you think you can when you're watching film, but in the live action of a game, there's not time to think about it and, and react and do well against it. Cowboys go with five wide receivers. Carter steps up, throws over the middle, and that's complete to the 35-yard line. Jason Witten has enough for a first down. Well, again, good protection for Quincy Carter. Watch the defense separate. Steps up a little bit, trips, but time, protection, letting the quarterback see, allows him to find the open receiver. And Jason Taylor going against Flozell Adams. This is going to be some tough job for him today. Flozell, Flozell Adams did a good job against Simeon Rice. Last week, it was Rucker from the Carolina Panthers. They were the leading sackers in football. They got none against him. It's like a final exam every week. <laughs> On first down, they'll try the ground game. And to the 33-yard line is Avion Kaysen. Well, it's, we, we talked about it because when you play the Dolphins, you always got to ask the opposing coach about Jason Taylor and Wally Agunglier. And in the first one, Flozo Adams, Bill Parcells says, look, if he shuts his Taylor guy out, this guy should go to the Pro Bowl. And really, that's how you do it. He goes up against, when you play left tackle, you are going to go against the other team's best pass rusher most of the time. And he has done an excellent job all year long. And how about the pairing on the left side of that line, along with Larry Allen, the seven-time Pro Bowler at left guard. Yes. Second and seven. Pretty good for him. Carter over the middle to about the 27 yard line Joey Galloway hauls it in and when the running game isn't working there's no hesitation on the part of the Cowboys to throw it on almost every down well geez I tell you what I am impressed again nobody around Quincy Carter first guy's not open go to the second and I'm not going to beat this to death but Jason Taylor was talking to himself after that last play because he was on the ground again okay question for you coach when do you start blitzing Quincy Carter because he's had all day to throw a couple of times. Only probably when you have to, Greg, because they do have fast, talented wide receivers. That would worry any coach, no matter how good your defensive backs are. Looking out, and that's complete to Anderson. First down, 20, 15, 10, 5, score! And there was your blitz. The coach who just got fired, that would be you, Greg. The Dolphins come with the blitz. The Dallas Cowboys have the perfect play called, a play-action fake, throw it quick to Richie Anderson in the flat. Nobody there to cover him, and he makes a defender miss for the touchdown. Anderson, his second touchdown of the day. with the extra point and it is good Richie Anderson takes the pass out of the backfield and goes 27 yards and closes the gap 244 to play first half it's the Dolphins by three a reminder coming up Sunday on 60 minutes what did Mike Wallace say to Lawrence Taylor one of the most fearsome players in football history that made him cry 60 minutes Sunday Tim Bowens calf injury return is questionable well that's Tim Bowens and Junior Seau off your defense that's big talent wise and when you get backups in there sometimes you can have mental mistakes because they don't get to practice all week with the first unit so Dave Wanstead sees his lead reduced to three Travis Miner Deep for the kick. Minor from the 13. And Collard as he approached the 25-yard line. 
Randall Williams with the stop and let's go back to the touchdown. Well Greg you talk when they're going to blitz it could be a run blitz you see Zach Thomas blitzing and then what happens when you blitz you think it's a run in a running situation who has Terrell Buckley on the blitz too who has the fullback because a lot of times you don't account for running backs you think you're going to tackle them or they're going to be in their pass protection that doesn't happen that's why Richie Anderson was wide open for the touchdown. Both teams, all of their timeouts remaining. Steve to Ricky Williams, and Williams to the 27 yard line. And we talked about the last time they were on offense, the Dolphins going deep, play action passes. They've done enough now. This Cowboy defense, they're going to have to back off and be a little more conservative. There's Norv Turner. Perfect game plan. What he likes to do. Let's run it and we throw it. Let's get some yards. None of that five yard stuff. Let's get some big plays. And we will not get another playoff before the two minute warning. Two minutes to play in the first half. Miami with a three point lead and we'll be back. Welcome back to Texas Stadium. Junior Seau back on the field. Anxious, no doubt, to get back into the fray before this half expires. Ricky Williams straight ahead with a hole. Across the 35 to the 37 and enough for a first down. Roy Williams coming up to make the hit. Now that's a collision. Roy Williams and Ricky Williams. And did uh, Ricky Williams look a little fast in that play? Phil, you talked about so many things that the Dallas defense leads the league in. One of them is the lowest percentage allowed completions by a quarterback, 47.7. But Jay Fiedler has completed nine out of ten throws so far today. Fiedler to throw. Completed midfield. Grabbed by number 88, Darius Thompson. And a timeout is called by the Miami Dolphins. They use their first timeout here in the second half. 17-14, Miami. Reminder, Jim, Dan, Dion, and Boomer are a minute 17 away. They'll have first half analysis. A recap of Green Bay Detroit performance by Toby Keith. All coming up, the Nextel halftime report. First down, Miami from midfield, play fake to Ricky Williams. Fiedler looking to air it out and overthrows his intended receiver, Randy McMichael. And we have a marker down on the far side of the field. Chris Chambers says it's on Dallas. Illegal hands, hands to the face. Illegal hands, hands to the face. Number 27 on the defense. Five-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Boy, Mario Edwards is having some afternoon, and not much of it is good. Up top of your screen, hands to the face mask to Darius Thompson. And, Greg, it, you know, I wish I could show everybody at home this Dallas Cowboy defense, it just keeps backing up, and they're giving a lot of space now. But you talked about Jay Fiedler. It's play calling. Tremendous execution by him and the wide receivers and the offensive line. Fiedler throws. Has his man in the middle of the field. That's complete to Thompson and Thompson to the 20-yard line. And another call for a timeout by the Dolphins with one minute to play. Nine straight completions by Fiedler. Has the Dolphins in scoring range. And the... Cowboy defense was all over the receiver. They they know the play's coming. They're looking for the in cut. And Jay Fiedler waits and waits. And finally, the receiver runs past the defense and allows the completion. And boy, another thing, too, Chris Chambers said, hey, you looked at me last night. Remember, we have big receivers. So that makes it tough sometimes for a defense that likes to try to overpower you. It makes it hard to do that against big receivers, which, which all the Dolphins guys are. Look at Jay Fiedler. Nine straight. And also, to remember, Jay Fiedler's been out. He said it last night. Boy, my arm's fresh. It's rested. It's relaxed. And you can definitely tell by watching him, he has a little more pep on the football when he throws it. 
First and ten from the 20. One minute to play. Fiedler over the middle, complete to Chambers to the 15-yard line. Plenty of time for the Dolphins. Second and four. Give it to Ricky. And Williams to about the 13-yard line. Kenyon Coleman with the grab there. And we get a timeout. Thirty-seven seconds on the clock. Well, these wide receiver for the Dolphins, they have been tremendous along with Jay Feeler in the first half. And I think they're just excited to get a chance to really be a part or the main reason for this offense going because so many times it's run it, let our defense do the work, but that's not the case today. These Miami Dolphins have fared much better on the road. They're not just not used to being a good team on the road. Take a look. Last season, they were two and six. They are four and one so far this season. Look at how they played defense. You allow your opponents 14 points a game. You have a pretty good chance of winning a football game. Well, anytime you have Ricky Williams and you have a defense that's playing pretty good this year, not great. But those, the combination of the two should allow you to go on the road and win football games. Aronde Gadsden on the field as a wide receiver for the first time today. The Dolphins are out of timeouts. Fiedler throwing to the five. McKnight lost the football. And no, it's been blown dead. He is down. That is not a fumble. Fiedler and the Dolphins to the line again coming up on 20 seconds to play and he spikes the ball on first down it'll be second and goal when we resume you can tell the Dallas Cowboys defense they're out of their element they're playing zones wide receivers wide open Greg we we watch we've done a game of theirs a couple weeks ago we see film you never see that but they're de they've been put in a position to do something they haven't done much of this year, and the Dolphins are taking advantage of it. Thompson to the left, Chambers to the bottom of the screen. Fiedler throwing back to the end zone and threw it behind Chambers. Phil, I always said that back of the end zone is a good idea. Yeah, what do you want to say there now, <laughs> Professor? But it is. Jay Fiedler had him wide open in the back of the end zone against Terrence Newman. And he just lets the football get away from him somewhat, throws behind, and it's incomplete. 16 seconds on the clock. Fiedler throws back in the end zone again. Caught touchdown. Chris Chambers. Watch what happens. Another zone coverage. It's really double coverage. And all oh, the safety came up to cover a tight end. And looks like we're going to get a review. A challenge from upstairs inside of two minutes. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, you didn't. It didn't? Because I, I thought it looked close if Chris Chambers got both of his feet down. First, it's a terrific catch. One, two. Looks like they're in. And he keeps control of the football once he hits the ground. The official looking at it right there. He had a great view. I got to see it again now. Oh, that's better. You can see it. Challenging whether the receiver had both feet inbounds after the catch. Wow, what a catch. Boy, I go back to when we were talking with Terrence Newman on Friday, and we were talking about the Dolphin receivers, and he said, I am impressed with the way Chris Chambers goes and gets the football. Uh, that's a good explanation or he goes and gets it he attacks the football 
second round draft pick from Wisconsin kind of a surprise his rookie year but in the NFL now if your team doesn't have one big fast go get the football wide receiver then your offense is just going to fall behind everybody else but stretches great awareness gets his feet down the officials right on it and assuming this stands as a touchdown what a way for the Dolphins to go into the locker room that's shot it looks like he gets I, 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 why I wanted to say I want to see the shot does his left foot get down orange toes on blue I guess you know those things Just you have a colorful observation probably got some orange shoes <laughs> speaking of shoes what about our fashion expert last night Zach Thomas <laughs> Walks into our meeting. He has two different shoes on. You know, it's not like they have to pack in a hurry. <laughs> what did our director, Larry Cavallina, tell you? The good news is you have another pair just like it at home. Well, I don't know if this is a slam dunk or not. When I when we saw the second replay, it looked like he got both of his feet down. Ruling on the field stands. Touchdown, Miami. And what stands is a terrific pitch and catch from Jay Fiedler to Chris Chambers. Chambers now with eight touchdown catches on the season, and he and Richie Anderson having a personal duel here today. Mare's extra point is blocked. That's the first miss on an extra point all season long by Olindo Mare, who struggled in the field goal department a couple of weeks ago. And let's see who gets a hand up. Flozell Adams, it looks like number 76, the offensive tackle, reaches up and gets. Look at this. Here's Chris Chambers, going to go to the back of the end zone. What he is, he's doubled by the safety in the corner. Watch the safety. Two tight ends come up the field. He reacts to the Randy McMichael underneath. That leaves Chris Chambers wide open behind. Good design, but an excellent read by Jay Fiedler to see the safety react up. This is the block once again, and Olindo Mare's attempt is no good. So with 10 seconds to play, it's a 23-14 Miami lead. Yeah, I, I had this game pegged right. I thought it would be, you know, I was really thinking 13 to 10. Final. Yeah, final. See, that practice time's overrated. Bounce and picked up at the 20 by Randall Williams. Williams bursts back across the 40 to about the 42 or 43 yard line. There are a couple of there are a couple of Dolphins who are saying that it's their ball, but the official rules that it's still Dallas football with six seconds to go. And being on the 42 or 43 yard line. I would expect the Cowboys to try to throw it all the way to the end zone for the jump ball. Two touchdowns for Richie Anderson, two for Chris Chambers. And this, in all probability, will be the final play of the first half. man rush and he flips it out to Kaysom Kaysom out of bounds at the 45 yard line and that'll do it for the first half a fine fine first half performance particularly by the Miami Dolphins Chris Chambers two touchdown catches we go down to Armin Katayan Thanks, Greg. Dave, a nearly flawless first half, at least offensively, very aggressive. Marred a bit in the end by that maybe critical extra point miss. Yeah, I mean, there's there no excuses for that. You know, we got to be stronger inside. I mean, we got veteran guys in there, and they know better than that. 
but uh, you know, our offense has been moving the ball. Defensively, we need to come out the second half and step up and play better. All right, Coach, thank you. Greg. Harmon, thank you. That is the end of the first half with our score, Miami 23, Dallas 14. We're coming back with the Nextel Halftime Report. It comes your way after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Strike there by the Dolphins. Fiedler scores. Richie Anderson's had a tremendous first half for the Cowboys. But, Dan, I want you to talk about Chris Chambers and Jay Fiedler. What a combo. This is a great combo, and we talked about it earlier in the show in the NFL today. They're going to go downfield, get the ball to Chris Chambers. There's going to be a lot of man coverage. He hits a big play there. Look, they don't cover Richie Anderson. There's a blown coverage right here. Punch, route. That route is uh, suggested to pick someone off, and that's what happened. And look out. A little more chamber music. The feet are down. 23 <laughs> 14. Boomer saying that extra point, though, will loom large. I think it will, but how about 16 first downs by the Miami Dolphins? Who would have thought that that would have been possible by a Dolphin team going against the best defense in the NFL? And Jay Fielder's running this offense to perfection. You know, we talked about them wanting to do a little play action, counter plays, and get him on the corner rolling out. They've done it six or seven times already. And Dion, your thoughts on that first half? Yeah, a lot more we, scoring than we thought here, We need huh? to check the helmets because that's not the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> defense that I saw. I thought you said they weren't going to score. He Texas Stadium, and again, happy Thanksgiving. Greg Gumbel along with Phil Sims. 23-14, Miami in the lead. Why shouldn't they be in the lead? They're doing things that we really didn't know if they'd be able to do. Example, they have thrown for 186 yards in the first half. Dallas allows an NFL low 156 a game. Well, I'm very surprised. Uh, we came in the game, we said, how can the Miami Dolphins find a way to generate points? Well, they've done it with play action passes with a quarterback who's been very sharp, throwing the football down the field. Halftime statistics pretty much tell the story. And although Richie Anderson has a couple of touchdowns and Chambers has two for the Miami Dolphins, the Dolphins have done very, very well. And you have to wonder what Dallas does here in the second half. Well, that's what I want to see, Greg. What's the Dallas defense do in the second half? Do they just say, OK, that was a bad first half. Let's go back to the original plan, which is was to be very aggressive and blitz Jay Fiedler. Will they do that? Well, we'll wait and see. Well, another thing that's to be determined here in the second half is exactly who wins this little puppy because we give one out every Thanksgiving Day. It is the Phil Simmons All-Iron Trophy, which will go to? Well, to the player who does the best thing for his team. We don't know if it's the most valuable. We'll just wait and see, and uh, maybe it's somebody who's going to make a, uh, an outstanding defensive play late in the game that wins the game for their team, and, well, we'll figure it out, Greg, as it goes along. I have four of those at home. Yeah, you're a true Iron Man, <laughs> yes. Cowboys will get their hands on the football first here in the second half. Mare kicks it away. From the three-yard line, it's Derek Ross to the 25. And wrestled down at about the 29-yard line. Let's go down to Armin. Well, a very honest Bill Parcells, Greg. He said, this was just a terrible job by my defense. By far the worst we've played all year on the run against the pass. He said, if we don't do a better job against the run of the pass this second half, we have no chance to win this game. And I asked him about putting some more pressure on Fiedler. He says, yeah, that's an option. But he said, right now, I've got a couple of cornerbacks that are kind of shell-shocked. Wow, that's, that's exactly right. And you could see that in their play late in the first half. I don't care who you are. You give up some big passes, you're going to lose some confidence. Carter to throw. Out here to Jason Whitten. Out of bounds. Junior Seau makes the stop as we look at the offensive leaders for the Dallas Cowboys in the first half. Quincy Carter, 11 out of 16 for 127 yards. And Richie Anderson with four rushes for 12 yards and a touchdown. And Jason Witten caught three passes, good for 23. And when you look at this Dallas Cowboys offense, they've got to be aggressive in the second half. There is nothing right now, of course, that tells you that your defense is going to be able to slow down the Miami Dolphins, so you've got to be aggressive, go out and try to score some points. Carter, under pressure, eludes the tackler, and here he goes, sliding down across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Jason Taylor trying to get to Quincy Carter and uh, yeah well you see where Jason Taylor is he does switch up every once in a while but going against Torin Tucker and Scadina also gets pressure on Quincy Carter but I noticed that right away in the second half that uh, Greg that Jason Taylor went to the other side 
getting tired of working on Flozo, Flozo Adams. So Junior Seau is back in the lineup for the defense of the Dolphins, but Tim Bowens is not. Kaysan and Richie Anderson in the backfield on third and four. Carter had it tipped as he was throwing the football. Picked up by the Dolphins. The Dolphins, Jason Taylor on his way to the end zone. Touchdown. Pressure by the defense. Blitz. Here comes Junior Seau. I couldn't tell if it was knocked out of his hand or he dropped it. Wally O'Gunlier was providing the pressure on the backside. And we get a late addition to the offense before Mare's attempted kick. The snap is good. The kick is good. And with 13-17 to play in the third quarter, the Dolphins stretch their lead to 30-14. to Jason Taylor on the scoring end for a change of the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins team record for re fumble recoveries returned for touchdowns now owned by Jason Taylor. That's his fourth in his career and look at the foot that Mari puts into this one out of the end zone it'll be a touchback the Cowboys will start on the 20 yard line let's show you what happened well you'll see the outside pass rush by Wally O'Gunglier tips the football right out of Quincy Carter's hands Jason Taylor picks it up pretty good jumping in the end zone oh nice slam shows you that he is fast athletic and Bill Parcells, couple things. Wally Agunglier, he is absolutely young sung hero of this Miami Dolphins defense. We always talk about Sertan, Madison, Jason Taylor, Zach Thomas, but there's a good pass rush on the other side of Jason Taylor, Wally Agunglier. 30 to 14, Miami's lead now. Carter back in the air, throws to the sideline. That's complete and out of bounds to Terry Glenn. Out to about the 27 yard line. I was asking, I'm sorry, Phil, oh, I was ahead. asking you earlier. This is a short turnaround for both teams, but it's an even shorter turnaround for the Miami Dolphins by a significant number of hours since they played Sunday night and the Cowboys played an early game Sunday afternoon. Well, that, you know, Greg, that's right. And, and I thought when you count up the ways the Cowboys could win this game, I could come up with five, but I could only come up with about two, maybe three when you think about the Miami Dolphins. Sunday night game traveling over here to play this on Thursday. They reacted very well, of course, to it. Carter goes down at the 21 yard line, and that's Zach Thomas. Well, the Dolphins, now they're in their element. They got good pass rushers. Zach Thomas, 54, reads the play, then gets around the fullback. Oh, Richie Anderson just never squares up. Doesn't even give himself a chance to block Zach Thomas. Quincy Carter has been under the gun a lot today. You know, you talk about the unfair advantages. How many Dallas Cowboy players that we talked to, they didn't even watch the Sunday night game of the Miami Dolphins. They were in the complex already studying, getting ready for this game. Third and seven. Carter, a lot of time, steps up, throws, incomplete. Intended for Joey Galloway, and that was Patrick Sertan playing defense. Yeah, that was some coverage. Joey Galloway, one of the fastest wide receivers in the league, number 84, presses up the field. And Sertan and Madison, this whole crew, they love to watch the quarterback. They see the release, and they're good enough to react, and he knocks it away. Charlie Rogers deep for the kick up coming from Toby Gowen. Better kick out of going this time. Markers are down from the 27 yard line. Rogers run out of bounds just across the 35. Peter Morelli going to. Well, let's see. 
He's consulting Bill Parcells. Well, what you got to do is count up how many yards you got. 12 men on the field, defense. The penalty is declined. First down. Good call when your punter's been inconsistent. We have 11.59 to play in the third quarter. The Dolphins back on offense when we return. On CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Friendly nonstop service all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. The all-new 270 horsepower Acura TL, a higher form of performance. And by NikeGridiron.com. The state flag of Texas flying at half-mast in conjunction with the 40th anniversary of the assassination of John F. Kennedy over the weekend. From the 35-yard line, Ricky Williams straight ahead, room to run across the 45 and out to the 47-yard line. Roy Williams made the stop as we check out the offensive leaders from the first half for the Dolphins, and Fiedler was magnificent. 14 of 17 for 186 yards and a couple of touchdown passes. Williams with 40 yards on the ground, and through the air, Chris Chambers caught those two TD passes. He had four catches in all for 61 yards. Can you picture every Miami Dolphin fan in the world back home going, where has this been? Yeah, well, listen. The heck with the fans. I want to say the same thing. Williams struggling, trying to reach midfield, comes up just short. And, and you know, Greg, it, it, we talk about this quite a bit during the season. You just, you know, you just kind of go along, you fight, you fight, and teams all the time uh, about this time of the season, they get in rhythm, they find the magic, whatever you want. They find what works for them, and they just start rolling. So maybe this is the start for the Miami Dolphins offense to really find out how to play and what they do the best. Well, all those question marks that you pointed out at the very beginning of the day still exist, but an offense like this will go a long way toward helping. They've already scored a season-high 30 points here today. Fiedler throws and complete. He was under pressure. Well, I would think the Cowboy defenders got an earful about a... Be alert for the little play action fake and the quarterback going away from where the runner is. They did so well with that in the first half. And by doing that, they've taken the aggressiveness away from the Cowboy defense. They're making them think. They're sitting back. And that's created more holes for Jay Feeder to throw the football. Chance for the Cowboys to stand up and say no here on third and seven. Give it to Miner. Miner can't break free at the line of scrimmage, and the Miami Dolphins will have to kick it away. Al Singleton with the good defensive stop. 30 to 14. There is no doubt how you play defense now. They have to get up there and take a chance. They've got to make something happen to give their football team a chance to come back. Matt Turk has punted just once today. Joey Galloway is deep for the Cowboys. High floater, fair catch called for and made at the 11-yard line. Good job by Turk. Good special teams play. 39-yard punt. Back. Cowboys from their own 11-yard line and Carter to throw. From behind, the pressure, and he goes down inside the five-yard line, and there's Jason Taylor. These Dolphin defensive ends have made their presence felt today. Flozell Adams against Jason Taylor. He, Flozell Adams has him for quite a while, but what happens is Quincy Carter cannot find anybody open. Look down the field as the receivers run. See if you see anybody open. Nothing. Shut out all the way around. Fourth Miami sack of the day makes it second and 18. And you're in that situation as a quarterback backed up, throw it away. Gonna run it straight up the middle and bouncing off of tacklers is Avion Kaysen. And Kaysen out to about the original line of scrimmage. Well, Quincy Carter, when he's had the opportunity, Phil, has performed well today. He's done very well. That pass right there led to a touchdown, a big third down conversion. Steps up in the pocket, leads the receiver perfectly. And then, if nothing's open down the field, 
He has very good mobility in the pocket, takes advantage of it, and picks up a first down. So he's played solid, I think, so far today. Given the opportunities, he's taken advantage of them. He's looking at third and 11. Carter on the move and throws it away. Junior Seau applying the pressure. And the moves begin to come down from the field as the punting unit comes on. Jason Taylor going to the sideline. Looks like he might have hurt his shoulder a little bit. Hmm, can't tell. So going to kick probably from about his goal line. Charlie Rodgers from the 45. Inside the 40-yard line, excellent field position for the Miami Dolphins as they try to improve on their lead. 34-yard punt, six-yard return, eight and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. By Paramount Pictures, Paycheck. Starts Christmas Day, rated PG-13. And by Burger King. The Cat in the Hat ornaments are here at Burger King. Collect all six. Well, with a 7-4 and four record, the Miami Dolphins started off the day holding down the second wildcard spot, and they will not move from that position, win or lose, by the end of the day. Dolphins would much rather win. Excellent field position. They give this to Ricky Williams, and Williams bursts through the line of scrimmage to the 35. Singleton and Dexter Coakley with the stop. Uh, Greg, you said it earlier, Dave Weinstadt, Norb Turner calling the plays, and it's amazing. It's, we've done quite a few Dolphin games this year. We did a lot of them over the past few years, but I don't think we've seen Dave Weinstadt looser and more confident than we saw him last night. And, and you know what? He must have been exuding that to his football team, too. And all week long, he must have felt good about what, they were, what their chances were against his Dallas Cowboys football team. On second and five, play fake to Ricky Williams this time. Pass over the middle, and that's complete. Chambers to the 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Chambers into the end zone again. Chris Chambers told us last night, he goes, I can't wait for this game. We're on the stage, and I want everybody to see what we can do. And I'm going to take advantage of the situation that is given to me and he has done that Roy Williams missing the tackle again playing soft defense they don't do that often receivers wide open down the field the kick is good for the first time in his young career Chris Chambers scores three touchdowns in a game and Miami running away in the last seven minutes and 28 seconds of playing time, the Miami Dolphins have hit the Cowboys with 20 unanswered points. Mare's kick. And this is Ross at the 10. 25. And a loose ball. One Miami Dolphin says they have it. Referees go to the bottom of the pile for the answer. And it does belong to the Cowboys. Well, Greg, we've been talking about this. Well, there's the fumble. Arturo Freeman makes the hit. Or he makes the hit, drives the receiver down in the ground. Cowboys have a couple players around it and come up with a loose ball. Well, as if things hadn't been going badly enough for the Cowboys, that would have been a well, total disaster. Good offensive play gives the defense momentum, gives them confidence, but it also shows in special teams. You feel good about yourself. Rob you Burnett is on in place of Jason Taylor in this series, Phil. That pass is complete just across the 30-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown. Yeah, let's go look at it. I, I keep telling you about the separation in the defense. Chris Chambers is going to go up and run across the defense. The fullback goes across, but look at the space. When you're playing zone defense, you try to spread the field evenly, and that is not spreading the field evenly as you 
Saw the big hole in the middle. Jay Fiedler once again, good read, perfect throw, and then a really good player, Chris Chambers, taking advantage of it. Ogunlier has switched to the right defensive end. Burnett is playing off the left side. Carter escapes the rush. On the move, throwing deep down the field, and that's incomplete. Intended for Joey Galloway. Let's go down Armin Katea and Armin. Greg, an update on Jason Taylor, who just left the field to go to the locker room. It's an injured left shoulder in the AC joint area where the shoulder and the collarbone come together. And just how much pain he's in is he accidentally bumped into Zach Thomas, his brother-in-law, as he was leaving the field. It looked like there was like an electric shock going through Jason's shoulder. So he's in some serious pain. Back to you. All right, Armin. Five wide receivers now for the Cowboys on third and seven. And here comes the blitz. Quick pass over the middle and dropped by Whitney. Carter had the open man. Pass fell incomplete. Yeah, good read by the quarterback. Perfect throw. You can, as the old saying goes, just do it one play at a time. Don't try to make a big play, do anything special. Jason Witten absolutely took his eyes off the football. That created a drop pass. Charlie Rogers and Rogers wrestled down at the 35 yard line back in 1993 Thanksgiving Day in the snow here at Texas Stadium the Cowboys and the Dolphins did battle 15 seconds left Pete Stoyanovich of Miami had his 41 yard field goal attempt blocked Cowboy defensive tackle Leon let inexplicably tried to fall on the ball near the goal line Jeff Dallenbach of the Dolphins recovered at the one, setting up Stojanovic at a 19-yard game winner, a final play of the game, and Miami took that one. But the rest of the season turned out pretty well for the Cowboys, didn't it? Yeah, it turned out pretty good. The Cowboys won't let it happen again. Pretty club. A little CBS logo in there. Gotta get you on here. Ricky Williams. And Williams tripped up and down at about the 38-yard line. Here's a late flag. You know, Greg, you see that Leon Lett play. Jimmy Johnson said the day after. Number 85, offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Penalties on Donald Lee. He says, you know, I'd cut him if he wasn't so good. <laughs> <laughs> Leon Lett at the time was one of the premier defensive linemen in the National Football League. Tremendous player. And, of course, they did go on, as you said, and won the Super Bowl. That was the last football game that they lost all season. Yeah, that was unfortunate, too, because at the time I was still playing for the Giants. <laughs> so that was a really good Thanksgiving for me. Sitting home watching the game going, yeah. But it didn't matter. They were too good. First and 20 for Miami. Going to give it to Williams. And Williams stacked up. Kenyon Coleman led the charge. A two-yard gain only at second and 18, and clock continues to move, coming up on 5.50 to play here in the third quarter. Well, when you talk about what the Miami Dolphins, they just got to make sure they do not make a mistake now. Just ball protection. Ricky, hold on to the ball. Don't worry about an extra yard. Just hold on. Jay Fiedler, be so careful throwing the football when we do. Don't make a mistake, because that is the only way the Dallas Cowboys are going to get back into this game. Look at the total yards in this quarter. Dallas with just four. Ricky Williams again. Trying to find the outside. Staves off one tackler. No. Woodson got a little help from Dat Wynn and ran him out of bounds at the 29. And Williams still on his back. All right, good sign. Jump right up. Well, Williams, Williams had a few people there to help cushion the fall. But it's a third and 16, and that blower is going to be taken well out of the way. Travis Miner has replaced Ricky on the field. Third and 16. 
with, and this is Miner. Miner, 35, trying to turn the corner, dragged down at about the 38-yard line. Excellent call by the Miami Dolphins. That's exactly what you should do in a situation like this. And if it's not for the nice tackle on the sideline, Travis Miner was going to pick up the first down. But, you know, you, you watch this game, you, all you can do, is, you got to talk about the Dolphins. It's, they really have been impressive in all phases today. The attitude, the emotion, the confidence they have shown. Greg, as you said, traits they have not shown much of this year. This is Joey Galloway. And Galloway with the fair catch at the 14-yard line. On a special Thursday episode, Detective Lily Rush takes on murders that have gone unsolved for years because it's never too late for justice. Don't miss a special episode of TV's number one new drama, Cold Case. That's tonight at 8, 7 Central on CBS. You know, I thought you said something interesting. I said, you know, Dave wants that was so loose, so excited, and you could feel the energy and all that stuff. And, and you said, yes, because it was a short week. He hadn't had time to work himself up into a nervous fit worrying about all the little factors that come into play in a football game so uh, but he was a much looser coach on Wednesday than we usually see on Friday or Saturday Carter quick drop quick pass Whitten holds on to this one and his forward progress will be marked close to the 20-yard line you know if you're the Dallas Cowboys in a situation like this I think you still got to run the football every once in a while just to protect your team protect your quarterback your receivers at least make the defense honor it somewhat. Yeah, Jason Taylor has returned to the sideline. That's a good sign. You know, he just looks like a pass rusher, doesn't he? You, you see him? Tall, lean, muscular. Pretty good traits to rush the pass. The give is to Kaysan. Kaysan has room to run across the 30 out to the 32-yard line. Sammy Knight, Brock Marion with the stop. And, and why you keep running the football? Because we all know you're a defensive lineman. You want sacks. So look at the outside defensive lineman, Wally Agunglia. Gets caught inside, gets blocked by Gerard, and then Kaysan takes advantage of it and gets outside. You know, we're talking about how Dave Wanstead felt about his team coming in. He felt really good. Worth pointing out, Bill Parcells felt good about his team before this game. Yeah, that's true. They are, yeah, most coaches do before the game. First down, Carter throws this one to Galloway. Is that caught? No, it's incomplete. And the ruling is unanimous. It'll be second and ten. Good pass rush by the Dolphins. Quincy Carter can't step into it, but still makes a terrific throw, and Joy Galloway goes down. Doesn't get his arms underneath. Yeah, but he did corral it, didn't he? Yeah. He corralled it after a bounce off the turf. Miami still in the minus yardage department throwing the ball for this quarter. Carter with a little flip to Richie Anderson. Anderson can't get away from Sammy Knight. It is. A two-yard gain. It'll be third and eight. You know, we said it earlier, though. When you get in a passing situation, so against this Miami Dolphin defense, we've talked about Patrick Sertain. You have Sam Madison on the other side. Terrell Buckley comes in. Then you have a first-round draft pick in Jamar Fletcher, too. And there's a good shot of Jason Taylor back in the game. Taylor back in on a pass-rushing situation. Third and eight. And we are under two minutes to play for the quarter. Carter stepping up, throws over the middle. It is intercepted. That's Sertan. Sertan out of bounds at the 40, and now we get a late penalty flag. I don't know if there's any doubt that Patrick Sertan is not one of the best corners in the National Football League. During the run back, Illegal block in the back, number 55 of the intercepting team. 10-yard penalty, first down, Miami. It's not because what he has done today. It's what he does all the time. On the outside, look at the trail technique and then the ability to reach up and make a catch full speed just like a wide receiver. 
Out fought Randall Williams for the football. Sertan's seventh interception of the season. That is a career high for him. Well, it's one thing to cover. You know, just think about it. I always, I marvel at this more than anything. You're a defensive back in the National Football League. You got to backpedal. And you got to run with some world class sprinters. And then they change direction. You got to do that, see the ball, make the play, and make sure you don't touch their wide receiver or they'll throw a flag on you. Something you can probably do, Greg. Right? No doubt. First down, Ricky Williams going to carry the football in the run. Tripped up at about the 47 yard line by Roy Williams coming up from his safety position. Roy Williams is one of the best tacklers I've seen in this league in a long time. Look how big he is at the safety position. But I got to admit, he met us. He met his match today, didn't he? And Ricky Williams. They've had a few shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder collisions, and Ricky Williams didn't fall backwards. Usually, when you run into Roy Williams, you go backwards. Either play fakes this time and pitches to Williams, and Williams breaks free. Forty. 30 and out of bounds inside the 30 yard line at the Dallas 28. Well, Dave Weinstead was right on Monday night when he said he went running up into North Turner's office and says, Oh, we're back. We're back. And it's because all the wonderful things we talked about today, what can make the difference in this football team is number 34. Catching it on the screen, but boy, does he look fast and explosive again. 18 yards on that pickup. You'd expect a running back that's used as much as him to wear down when the season go, goes on. It's been the opposite for him. He has been much better of late. Give to Travis Miner. And Miner straight ahead to about the 26. And we'll see. Uh, it does appear to be the last play here in the third quarter. My key on that, Phil, was Jay Fiedler taking a casual stroll to the sideline. Well, I, I think the Dolphins are going to try to schedule a game for Sunday because they're hot. <laughs> Plus, they don't need that 10 days off. Last 10 seconds will tick away here in the third quarter. The teams will exchange ends of the field one more time. That's the end of the third quarter with our score. The Dolphins 37, the Cowboys 14. We'll come back to Texas Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. 37-14, Miami with the lead and the ball in the gift to Ricky Williams. Williams trying to break it outside, but he's wrestled down at the 30-yard line by Terrence Newman. It has been a Ricky Williams day for the Miami Dolphins. Well, when you have Ricky Williams in the backfield, the defense is going to react to him. And early in the game, which set the tone for this football game, I thought the defense reacts to him. Jay Fiedler was keeping, throwing the bootleg passes and getting tremendous results from those play action passes. So good thought. Not only can you use Ricky Williams to run with him, but you've got to take advantage of the fact that the defense keys on him. Conrad goes in motion. Give it to Ricky again. Going to try the left side. Shakes a tackle and out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And that tackler that he shook was Roy Williams. Gosh, he runs so fast. To go high is almost impossible against Ricky Williams. When he's running the outside like that, you got to go down there and, and nibble on those shoes. That's the only way you're going to get him down. Because he's strong, he'll stiff arm you. Olindo Mare will line this one up from 42 yards out. That kick on its way and looks good. The Dolphins keep piling it on. Like stuffing on top of the mashed potato. 40 to 14. Miami. Our best wishes for a happy Thanksgiving to all of you. That's a great job on camera. Take one. Mare's kick comes down at the eight yard line. Derek Ross. And Ross shakes the tackler at the 20, across the 25 to the 27 yard line, and we go down to Armin. 
You know, Greg, it's interesting. At this time of year, even with five games left, players don't usually say much about must wins, but it was interesting last night. Zach Thomas said, listen, given the fact that we need 10 wins, given the fact we've got such a really tough schedule in December and how poorly we've played in December, we really have to win this game. No way around it. It's just one of those things where, you know, you hear it and you go, wow, he's right. They have to win this game. Back to you. And Zach Thomas has played pretty well. Not bad for a guy who's had migraine headaches since Monday. Harder throw on first down. Popped up in the air and incomplete. It'll be second and ten. Kind of a road is ahead for these Miami Dolphins. They'll travel to New England to start December. Home to Philadelphia. Travel to Buffalo. Home to the New York Jets. And you go, well, the Jets in Buffalo, they're four and seven. Remember, they're in the division with them at Buffalo. Buffalo's defense is good. And we've seen the league. We all know that you can lose to anybody, anywhere, anytime. And the Buff and especially teams in the division, they would love to do something to harm your season. Richie Anderson, straight ahead. And by the way, you Philadelphia. Remember early in the season, some experts were talking about how horrible the Philadelphia Eagles were because they'd lost one game. Was that us? No, it wasn't us. Oh, yeah. But should this score hold up, and it appears that it will, the Philadelphia Eagles will grab the lead in their division for the first time. Well, they weathered the storm, Greg, and hey, the Philadelphia Eagles this week, Carolina Panthers, they're pretty good. Then the following week, it's the Eagles against the Cowboys. So crucial games coming up this late in the year when you're leading your division of course they're all crucial but a lot of the big teams are playing each other Carter a lot of time going to go deep oh what a catch Terry Glenn pulled that one in and look at the Cowboys they move all the way to the 13 yard to the 18 yard line of the Miami Dolphins well there's a couple things on the play first it's an unbelievable throw by Quincy Carter he throws it about 60 yards in the air on a line. Brock Marion is in perfect position, misjudges the speed of the football. It actually, he nicks it. But not too often is a safety that deep down the field and the football still able to get by him. Carter up against the play clock here, down to three, two, one, and he got the playoff. Time again, throwing to the end zone. It is caught and ruled a touchdown. Antonio Bryant. Yeah, Dave Wanstead's getting that red flag ready. I didn't see any ruled out by being pushed up in the air. One, two, well, hold that red flag. Terrific call on the far side of the field by the official. What a catch. Quincy Carter just throws it as hard as he can, and both feet hit the ground. His arms are underneath. Well, Dave Wonstadt's going to challenge it anyway. Yeah, it's a good challenge. I mean, look, you're up 40 to 14, but... You just never know and always try to take points off the board. Both feet hit, control the football, arms underneath. He completes the catch. Should he lose this, Dave Wonsap would like to think he's not going to be missing these timeouts. You know what's also great? Antonio Bryant's had a little trouble of late holding on to the football, dropping passes, so... You make a spectacular catch like that, that'll bring your confidence back. If it stands, it will be his second touchdown catch of the season. Well, I tell you what, two throws, and I've said this to many people, down the field, Quincy Carter is really good throwing the football down the field. Now, talking to Bill Parcells about Quincy Carter, so many things he's happy with. He prepares like nobody has been around so he has a hard time being hard on him sometimes because he knows how hard he is working. And he's a good downfield thrower, but he, what did he say to us the other day? He looks at us, he goes, now you know he's going to miss a few. And you just got to live with it. So he is not NFL accurate yet. In other words, when they're opening this league, 
if you're going to be a good, a big time starting NFL quarterback, you just can't miss them when they're open. As you say, Bill Parcells admits that he is not as hard on Quincy Carter as he might be on other quarterbacks. The only thing that he's on Carter about is his preparation. Right, you know, because it's so good, he just admires him for it. And Quincy Carter said something too to us that they go that was interesting. He goes, "They got to keep on me to keep being aggressive." Because when you're young, sometimes, sometimes, you, you want to take the easy throws. And it, Bill Parcells is a lot like North Turner. When they throw it, they want yardage. They're not worried about your completion percentage. They're worried about getting some big plays that lead to scores. You mentioned a bunch of the Cowboys were back at the complex watching film on Sunday night. And Quincy Carter After was watching his the play, incompletions. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown, Dallas. Yeah, that's what he. That's right. The players came back to watch film. I wanted to watch all of my incomplete passes from that afternoon. Shoot, I gotta tell him. I just look at the good plays. Feel good about <laughs> yourself when you win. Some people, if they look at the bad plays, they'll be there all night. They're looking on. 12:22 to play here in the fourth quarter, and Dave Wanstead has his good hands people on the field just in the event of an onside kick. Well, I think they kick it off. I don't think they'll onside kick this. They do kick it deep, and this is Charlie Rogers. From the three. To the 20. And across the 25 to about the 26 or 27-yard line. And we remind you, tonight, it's a night of Thanksgiving here on CBS, beginning with a special Thursday episode of TV's number one new drama, Cold Case. And then don't miss the most watched show on television, CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, followed by Without a Trace. Don't miss an all-new Thanksgiving late show with David Letterman after your local news. It's all here tonight on CBS. You know, I was getting ready to say, David Letterman's coming on Sunday night. It's Thursday, isn't it? It's a weekday to work yeah, that. It's a weekday. That's right. Well, you look at this game, 40 to 21. It's possible the Dallas Cowboys could still get the football three more times to score and give themselves a chance to win. But to do that, they've got to have a three play and punt by the Miami Dolphins offense. Let's see what North Turner has in mind for the offense here. Ricky Williams off oh, look at the running room up the middle and out across the 40 to the 41 yard line Roy Williams with the stop but yeah. not until Williams tacked on 15 more yards yeah and that was really a good call a couple reasons why they fake the reverse that slows the defense down just a little you don't want to take chances and when that when we talked about Ricky Williams saying that to Dave Wanstead got all on the excited about it, it was this play they were talking about the fullback leading up in there in a linebacker, the tailback, Ricky Williams falling him. That's the play they said they could do today, and they have really done it well. Ricky Williams creeping up on 1,000 yards for the season. Gets the handoff. Right side and out to about the 44. And you know, you talk about situations like this. This is new territory for the Miami Dolphins, having a big lead in the fourth quarter. But Norb Turner, he really grew up in coaching under John Robinson. And John Robinson at USC in the pros when he coached the, the Rams, whatever, he was an expert when it came to game management. Situations, you're ahead, you've got to know how to manage the game, give you the opponent less opportunities, all those circumstances. And he learned from the best, one of the best. And he's very good at it. Second and seven. Williams. And Williams out to midfield, and that should put Ricky over a thousand yards for the season. Boy, it's Greg. You hear me say it all the times. It does put Ricky Williams over a thousand yards. But when it's late in a football game, I, you know, so many. This is kind of why you get. You don't know what to feel about the Miami Dolphins. You see them do so many good things. Why isn't it working better? But when it gets late in the game and you can line up against the number one defense in football and just run it up in there and get first downs, that's impressive. Fiedler going to keep it looking for the first down. And from the spot, it appears that he has it. 
And time will continue to come off the clock for the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, you know, let's go back to the opening of the game, and you said there's always some rumblings down in Miami, and, and rightfully so, too, at times, because you think of the Dolphins so many years in a row. They've been solid, but they never get it to that point where you go, this is it. They're going to get in the playoffs, and they're going to be a really big factor. They squeak into the playoffs last year they don't make it and you know they just don't do well when they get in there Ricky stacked up at the 50 yard line there Leroy Glover so when leading you, the when charge you, when you do that as a team you know it frustrates everybody and like here the Dallas Cowboys these fans they're pumped up about their team because they've had some losing seasons they're tired of it so winning it brings back the excitement but it's kind of the opposite in Miami. They just kind of win. They have solid years, but they cannot get that big year to get to a championship game or to a Super Bowl. 358 total yards for Miami against a very good defense. Do you think that's right, though? When you think of the Dolphins and how what their reactions are from their fans? Absolutely. Fiedler to Williams and Williams inside the 50 to the 49 yard line it'll be third and 11 and when you talk about the nfl of course everything's documented and we keep track of everything so no matter what happens here today they'll go well yeah but coach how about december how are you going to do there so look what they've done the last what they've done under dave weinstadt first two years they make the playoffs not great finishes last year they don't make it so even though this will be an impressive win, all right, here we go. How are you going to do at the end? And, I, and I, listen, that's just the way it is. And Fiedler calls timeout after he takes as much time off the clock as he can. We're down to 7.54 to play in the fourth quarter. Wanstead and the Dolphins in charge. Useful item in and of itself, practically speaking, but as a, in a symbolic way nothing more valuable in the world Phil Simms all iron trophy to be awarded at the conclusion of today's game nothing more valuable in the world yeah. Ricky Williams left side running room and inside the 40 yard line and the Dolphins continue to take time off the clock and chew up yardage and we have an official timeout on the field he's close to a first down look at the blocking up front Ricky Williams fast elusive missed tackle and then he will get you a couple extra by lowering his shoulders Roy Williams tried to get lower than Ricky Williams it was hard to do 105 yards on the day for Ricky Williams his third straight 100 yard rushing game see the football there the Duke good shot named for a gentleman you know well that's right Wellington Mara throwback day throwback uniforms by both teams using a football there it says the Duke well into Mara owner of the New York Giants along with Bob Tish but that's a good nickname for him I would think the Duke Ricky Williams good grief 15 career 100 yard games well let's think back the Miami Dolphins they make a trade to the New Orleans Saints for Ricky Williams a lot of people thought that's a gamble but it has paid off tremendously Fiedler on fourth and inches with the keeper looks like he got it and it is a first down by the way we're talking Thanksgiving and we're talking family and our CBS crew gets together either here or in Detroit every Thanksgiving, and we're missing one member of our crew this week, and that is uh, George Graffio, one of our camera guys involved in an auto accident here in Dallas on Tuesday and couldn't go today. Made the trip home. He's relaxing and, and recuperating yep. at home, and we wish George all the best. And tell him to hurry back. We have a game Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, enough time. Let's go. A couple of days off, but... Hope George is doing well. Like the cranberry sauce off of his chin. Let's go back to work. Ricky Williams tripped up on his way to the line of scrimmage by Roy Williams. Yeah, you know, you showed the Iron Man trophy, and we've told the story many times. It's they're making fun of me 
because I iron my clothes and you know I don't care make fun of me and that's fine I do that stuff and it's the way I grew up you know I didn't have a maid ironing my clothes like Greg Gumbel did growing I'm up proud of you proud of me what I'm proud of you ironing your clothes well it's the beside the point so that's why we make the award we give it away to somebody who plays a role in winning the game and most valuable yeah it could be tough tough yeah we like them to be tough that's why it's precisely the point you yeah it'd be tough to iron your own clothes and then <laughs> come out and face up to it second and ten <laughs> Ricky Williams again Ricky is going to sleep well tonight Let's look at some of the previous winners, though. Stephen Boyd, Dexter Coakley, Charlie Batch, Mike Anderson, last year, Troy Brown. I'll never forget Stephen Boyd. It was like the perfect scenario. He was hurt, couldn't play, gets in the game, plays real well. Then it's late in the game. They're kicking a valuable field goal. They have 10 guys in the field. Stephen Boyd was watching. He runs out on there and becomes the 11th guy. And I said, this is the man today. So that's kind of what we're looking for. And. And today, when you look at the Miami Dolphins, of course, it's got to go to somebody in that team. Jay Fiedler has been, no other word, spectacular. And Chris Chambers has been that. Ricky Williams has been pretty awesome, too. Ricky Williams is the man down the stretch here. What kind of a day has Jay Fiedler had? I'd say he's going pretty well. Is 156, is that a perfect rating? Nope. What is he missing? A decimal point? Ethan Cooperson telling me. One, oh, 158.3. Oh, ah, oh, you're getting picky. And Jay Fiedler. So we told you what a day. Chris Chambers. This really, this just crushed the, my, the confidence of the Dallas Cowboy defensive backs. That's just an awesome catch. And then the speed, given the chance, to score touchdowns in the open field. And Chris Chambers, you know what? Jay Fiedler and Chris Chambers, they told us last night. And, they, you know, not everybody tells us this stuff. They were really confident they were going to make this work today. Come on, Kerry. Turk looking to pop one inside the 10 yard line. It rolls into the end zone for a touchback. 4.59, all that remains on the clock this Thanksgiving day. And Fiedler and the Dolphins looking good. CBS is sponsored by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you. Nothing's better. Dr. Pepper. And by Chevy Silverado. It's the right truck. Hey, tonight on an all-new Thanksgiving Late Show, don't miss a special appearance by Dave's mom. Plus, music from Moby in an all-new Top Ten. The tradition continues all-new tonight. From the 20-yard line, Carter and the Cowboys, 4.59 on the clock, and we get flagged. Prior to the snap, false start, number 76 in the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. So it'll be first and 15. Well, I know it's late in the game. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. It's kind of romantic, Greg. Hmm. Get away from me. <laughs> but... Couple good signs for the Dolphins, though. Jason Taylor, less than five minutes ago, in 19 point lead, he is still in the game, so that tells you that shoulder is not that serious. Kason to the 15 and out of bounds, just short of the 20 yard line. These Dallas Cowboys, with a loss here, will fall out of the tie for the division lead. They will fall to what would be the first wild card playoff spot in the NFC standings, and those are the games remaining ahead of them. Three division games and then at New Orleans. So, again, nothing's easy. At Washington, that'll be, they're all tough. But that big one they're going to have after losing this game, they'll wait to see what the Philadelphia Eagles do on Sunday is the following Sunday up in Philadelphia. Carter throws a bullet, and that's complete to Witten. And Witten out across the 35-yard line, and we get a late flag or two. Quincy Carter is just making some impressive throws. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, 55 in the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Not the first time tonight Junior has had a flag thrown on him. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, Dave wants that you go, well, why is he angry? Because the game's not over, that's why. Just, he wants it over. Put it away. Don't make mistakes regardless of score. Especially mistakes like that. Carter. Can't spin out of trouble. Junior Seau got that one. Fifth Miami sack of the day. That'll make up for the personal foul he had to play before. Junior Seau dropped back in coverage, and then when he saw Quincy Carter scramble, he came on a quick blitz. This pass out to midfield, and Witten reaching forward to about the original line of scrimmage. You know, it'll be third and ten. Greg, you look at this game, and Dave wants to learn. He learned a valuable lesson. He said he learned it last week. He learned it while he was standing on the sideline watching his game against the Washington Redskins. He says, that's it. Always get out there. And today they did it. Stop the run. When you got really good defensive backs, which he does, you've got to make sure the other team doesn't run the football on you and throw in to the, really the strength of what you have, and that is good cover corners who can make plays. And they stopped the run today. Boy, the Dallas Cowboys, it was almost a victory. They got back to the line of scrimmage at times. And now Dallas looking at a fourth and ten. See, Miami's defense today has held the Cowboys to 69 yards on the ground. Yeah, going into the game, they were fourth in the league. They're being the best at doing it. Fourth and ten. Carter throws, and that's complete to Terry Glenn for a first down. Clock continues to move. 350 to play. Another good throw by Quincy Carter. And you're a quarterback, you're at home watching this. Never give in. Grind it out to the end. If it takes 10 plays to score from here, do it. Don't just throw one into the defense and let them intercept it. Carter, again, dodges the rush, throws this sideline, and it's too far. Galloway, the intended receiver. That'll stop the clock with 3.27 to play. Excellent movement in the pocket by Quincy Carter, too. Pretty good numbers. Even the one interception, that was just a terrific play by Patrick Satan. Finding the open receiver. And again, uh, as impressive of any, as anything is the fact that he just moves around to give himself a little more time to throw it down the field. snap and the give us to case on and case on is down inside the 35 yard line what amazes me phil is the swing of emotion and of the playing talent on the field from one week to the next the cowboys no one expected them to put 24 points on the board on sunday against a very good defensive unit the carolina Panthers. greg it's just such a fine line in this league now there's so many good players and carter just threw that one up and sammy knight brings it back 30 on the move midfield to the 30 and out of bounds at the 25 yard line and that's the throw i was talking about don't do it that was just it's it's a hope shot you get frustrated you're losing and you just go well i gotta make a play no you don't play it like the score is tied and you just want to drive it down in there and get the final score of the game but Quincy Carter takes a huge risk. Sammy Knight makes the interception. Of course, that makes Dave Wanstead happy. And it's another little lesson that Bill Parcells will teach Quincy Carter. That is a 70-yard return by Sammy Knight. Knight registers his third interception. And with 250 to play, Fiedler will look to just put the lights out. Travis Miner to the 20. And of course they do a smart thing, taking Ricky Williams out. Not too often in the National Football League do you get an opportunity to substitute and put in different players because all the games are close. How's that for a couple of pretty good defensive ends? 
Jason Taylor and Wally O'Gunlier. Yeah, just a just again an impressive day all around for the Dolphins. And you Patrick Sertan, Zach Thomas, all the stars, Jason Taylor, O'Gunlier, Chris Chambers, Jay Fiedler, the quarterback, all of them. Terrific days. This is minor, and this to get us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play in Dallas. Thanksgiving Day belongs to the Miami Dolphins. Two minutes to play here in Dallas, and we remind you, coming up, the Subway post-game show, Jim, Dan, Dion, Boomer, recap all of today's Thanksgiving action and the All-Iron Player of the Game Award coming up on the Subway post-game show. Fiedler. Well, I'll bet that was sounded like a good idea when it first started. <laughs> Well, that's right. You're right, Greg. Hell yeah, let's keep it. You'll fool them. We can get around the end and get some. Yeah, right. They'll never expect it. Run, Ricky, run. He did that today. Well, you know, the Dallas Cowboys actually in the second half have stopped the bootleg passes and the movement by the quarterback, but it's too late. It's too... They got burned by it many times in the first half. Second half, they've been getting Ricky Williams. This is fourth and 12. And Miner goes nowhere. Dat Win makes the stop. Dat Win telling us the other day he's got members of both sides of his family in town for Thanksgiving. About 15 or 20 people for dinner when he winds up here at the stadium. Yeah, it's not going to be a good occasion. It really isn't. When you lose a game like this, especially at home on Thanksgiving, you're 8 and 3. Everybody thought y'all were going to play well and win it. Just not going to be a great tasting meal. But you look at the Dallas Cowboys. They're eight and four. Of now, everybody will write them off. It's just don't do it. They're going to have time to regroup. They get the rest up here. Bill Parcells is going to give them a few days off because they've been going so hard since training camp. Don't be surprised. They can reload and do well. Carter on the run. 45 and out of bounds at about the 48 yard line. We haven't had a chance to talk a whole lot about Quincy Carter today because this Miami team has played so well. But look, I, I, I think he's having a very good season. Uh, not great, but he's handled himself so well. Look at his numbers. He, he's good with his teammates. He's an excellent leader in the locker room on the field. You During think that's games, a lost start, don't you? I do. In the NFL, the quarterbacks have just forgotten about how much power they have. Be a leader. Work hard. Make the guys around you do it, too. And Quincy Carter is doing that. Look at that ability to dance around, get rid of the pass to Galloway. Well, what did Dave Wanstead say? Jay Fiedler showing emotion last week. That was energy they haven't been, they haven't had. Not only when Brian Greasy was in there, but even before when Jay Fiedler was in there. So if you're a quarterback in this league, you better come out and be part of it and bring some emotion and some energy to your football team. And, you know, I don't know why it's gotten away from a lot of quarterbacks. I, I think coaches have taken it away from them. You'll never hear me say that the players and... Illegal formation, number 83 in the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. We were having this discussion before the game. There's no question the players are better now than ever before. There's no doubt about it. Just look at the plays we've seen out here today, the throws, the catches. I mean, defensive ends like Jason Taylor, who are faster than any running back in the National Football League 10 years ago. Perhaps coaches have taken the personality out of it by being so mechanical. The calls come down from upstairs. This is how you do this. You don't change this play. Yeah. You do this just as it's called from the sideline. And we've run into quarterbacks who don't have the authority to change a play at the line of scrimmage. Well, everything, Greg, but the, your authority comes on the practice field, in the locker room. Work with the guys. Tell them what you want. You know, be a leader, and, and again, Quincy Carter has done, has done that for this team. Carter, far side of the field to Antonio Bryant. And there are 42 seconds to play. That's a 19-yard pickup and a Dallas first down. Because you know what? I've been in NFL locker rooms, and we hear it. We know it from coaches. Who's Besides the coach, who's the next guy they always blame? 
It is the quarterback. And trust me, the players in the field, in the locker room, he's going to be the first guy they blame, too. Well, you know, I know I'm not playing well, but the quarterback is really not playing very well. That means for you, you get the blame even after you stop playing. <laughs> That's well deserved, though. Carter. Trying to pick somebody out while eluding the rush throws incomplete. And a penalty marker is down in the end zone. Good job by Quincy Carter. As a quarterback, look, if they're rushing three, you know you don't have to make a fast, quick decision. Advanced discussion is delaying Thanksgiving dinner. Who's cooking for you? Delta Airlines. <laughs> Pass interference, number 20. Foul happened in the end zone. Automatic first down. Penalties on Arturo Freeman. And it comes with 33 seconds to play. Right here. So it'll be a first and goal. And now Miami's going to call a timeout. Oh, now your dinner's getting cold. Yeah. Timeout on the field with 33 seconds gives us a chance to tell you about Sunday here on CBS. The NFL on CBS tops off the holiday with doubleheader action. First division leaders clash. The Patriots take on the Colts. We'll be in Indianapolis or the Bengals battle the Steelers. And then the Chiefs tangle with the Chargers. Check your local listings. It begins with Jim Dan Dion and Boomer on the NFL today where you will be shocked to hear what Lawrence Taylor tells Mike Wallace on 60 Minutes about women and drugs. See a preview of this powerful interview on the NFL Today, Sunday on CBS. For more, you can go to NFL.com or NFL on AOL. Jim Nance and the crew in New York had a good day. Looked like a beautiful day in New York. Jim Nance was down here on Tuesday. Yes, he was. We had all of CBS down here. Maybe on Casey in the backfield. And we get a timeout with 26 seconds to play. Quincy Carter has helped off the turf. Now, see, if I was the coach, I would bring in my extra tight end or two tight ends and get two running backs in there, and I'd have a play action fake and let my quarterbacks throw another touchdown. You laugh. I'm serious. I would do it for his confidence. It's just another way of just, come on, build it up a little. It's been a rough day for the football team. Quincy Carter's played well. And they will have about a week and a half. Spoken like an ex-quarterback, yes. huh? <laughs> Down 40 to 21, you see an opportunity for a touchdown pass. Second and goal. Carter's going to throw it. Picked off by Zach Thomas. There was some question whether Zach would even take the field today. Suffered a slight concussion last week. We told you he's had migraines since the beginning of this week. We even teased him a little bit last night when he came into the room and wondered if his shoe selection was a result of the concussion. That's not the kind of pass I wanted to throw. What, Zach Thomas? He reads the play all the way. He knows it's the inside receiver running that quick out that so many teams do. And he gets all the way across the field to make the interception. Sorry, Greg. I just wanted to show it. And... How about this Miami defense today? Five sacks, five takeaways. Well, that was some play. But that's film study, knowing what to do. And when the quarterback moved right, he took off. Sage Rosenfels now in to take the final snap for the Miami Dolphins and it will be one happy plane ride back to South Florida. The Miami Dolphins improve to eight and four. The Cowboys fall to eight and four for Phil Simms and Armin Katayan. Greg Gumbel saying so long.
Our final score, Miami 40, Dallas 21. Up next, Jim Nance and company have the Subway postgame show. And stay tuned. We'll be back later to award the Phil Simms All-Iron Player of the Game trophy. But first, thank you to the men and women of CBS Sports who were away from their families and loved ones on this holiday so that we could bring you today's game. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Is sponsored by Subway. Good so you don't always have to be. Subway, eat fresh. All right, folks, the Dolphins now 5-1 and one on the road this year. Welcome to the Subway postgame show here on CBS. Dan Dion and Boomer are here. we got all kinds of comments coming your way. But first, a reminder tonight on CBS, stay tuned for TV's most watched new drama, Cold Case. Then it's the most watched show on television, CSI, crime scene investigation. Followed by Without a Trace. And don't miss an all-new Thanksgiving late show with David Letterman after your local news. It's all here tonight on CBS. Let's go back out to Texas Stadium. Armin Contain is standing by with the honors for the All-Iron Player. Armin, take it away. Thanks, Jim. A little history here. The first time ever in the history of this award, two winners. I'm with Jay Fiedler, Chris Chambers. Jay, you threw for three. You ran for one. Chris, you caught three. From all of us here at CBS Sports, especially Phil Sims and Greg Gumbel, certain tenacity, a certain toughness you guys displayed today, the entire team displayed today. Congratulations. I know, Jay, I'll give it to you since you had your hands on the ball a lot today. Just the idea of being so aggressive today, first time I think we've seen it in six years, you guys were so aggressive against the number one defense in the NFL. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, we came out starting out the game aggressively, throwing the ball deep to Chris, and, uh, you know, that was our game plan coming out. And, you know, it was up to us on the field to make those plays and, and give the coaches a chance to, to keep calling them. Defensively, five turnovers, a great game. Both Jason Taylor and Goonlier, your, your defense was really a, as much of a story of this game. What do you think of their effort today? Oh, it was tremendous. You know, coming back off that short week, it, it was really hard on us, you know, physically, mentally. We all got in the game plan. Uh, we all did a little extra studying, and we came out this week uh, and, you know, had a, had a great Thanksgiving today. Uh, I just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving at home. All right, everyone back in Long Island, Jen back in Miami, we love you. Chris, turn our attention to you. You told us last night you were looking for a big day today on a big stage. You certainly did it with those three touchdowns. Tell us about that. You know what? You know, Jay basically just gave me an opportunity to make plays, and it was, we was kidding about it last night about um, Randy Moss coming out here and getting three touchdowns. It was great that it turned out that way. Well, guys, congratulations. I know you said, Phil, you're looking for, the, you're looking for Phil to give you that uh, car, Jay. I'll let you guys fight about this. Let's go back to New York and Jim Nance. Jim? All right. Thank you. And again, congratulations to those two. That's a great combination, really. And it looks like uh, when Fiedler's in there, Dan, Chambers, it, it's a great combo. And you didn't seem to have the same effect there with Greasy and Chambers. Well, I think really from last week, him coming in and... and bringing that team from behind and then this this big game on a short week and and him you know they they're executing what they needed to do is get the ball down the field big plays three touchdowns by chambers and you know and there was early a talk that they wouldn't even score and <laughs> they put up 40. wait a minute what do you mean talk? here's chris chambers. that's what i heard you know they're talking about randy moss and he really is graceful watch this back of the end zone great grab for great Yet another touchdown. And then the move here, Dion. Oh, my goodness. Roy, big Roy, going for the knockout blow, missing this guy. But I'll tell you what. They, you they, love the they, run after the Fiddler catch. Fiddler is the same guy. Weren't they asking for his head earlier than the year? No, they weren't. But he wasn't making the big throws down the field, and that's what they needed. And they've been doing it the last two games. Think, in the second I, half, I'm sorry, and they did it in this I, game. I do apologize. I really think the five turnovers may have had something to do with this game. I don't know. They, they, they scored hey, 40, hey, didn't All they? I know is this, is that New England goes to Indianapolis on Sunday. If they lose to Indianapolis next week in New England is for first place in the AFC East. Think of all the drama that Dave Wanstead and Jay Fiedler and Brian Greasy and everybody else has been going through down in Miami. Now they have a chance to atone well, possibly for first hot. place. Maybe they should play this Sunday. Hey, listen, you <laughs> should get on beyond <laughs> the plate this one. He did say they put a zero on the board. The Dolphins? Yeah, they he's right. Say he about the four, four in front, front of them. <laughs> That's all. We're going to hear from Dave Wanstead of the Dolphins in the locker room in a moment. You guys are bad. <laughs> show is sponsored by subway good so you don't always have to be subway eat fresh back here on the subway post game show a reminder this sunday be sure to join dan dion boomer and me at noon eastern for the nfl today you'll get a first look at lawrence taylor's controversial 60 minutes interview with mike wallace who asked the hall of the big game my man's old old summer girls who came in everyone talked about the tune in about the cow came in here with we give a game ball to coach, man. He's been through a lot. Hold on. Hold on. The biggest. 
The biggest reason you're getting the game ball because they gave us some damn rest. Yeah. Thanks, coach. Yeah. Big win. Yeah. Hey, Mark, and I will share this with all the coaches. North yeah. 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 All right, game ball to the coaches. Deion, that scene. <laughs> uh -huh. Big win uh, for the Dolphins. And that shows a lot of respect that the players have for the coaches. And that's the first time I've seen a coach. That was a uh, <laughs> receiver's coach, Coach Ford, with his shirt off in the locker room. I've never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> that's just me. All Certain right. Things, you you know. would notice we'll continue like with that, more you know. of the Subway Post Game Show here on CBS. <laughs> <laughs>